क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी सिक्स इज मैच द फॉलोइंग विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द मोबाइल कंप्यूटिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज इन लिस्ट वन डिफरेंट डिफरेंट मोबाइल कंप्यूटिंग टेक्नोलॉजीज आते हैं एंड फर्स्ट वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट देयर फंक्शनैलिटी अबाउट देयर डेफिनेशन अबाउट देयर वर्किंग वन बाय वन एंड देन वी विल कम बैक टू आवर क्वेश्चन ओके सो द फर्स्ट टेक्नोलॉजी वी इज जी एस एन and the enhancement of gsm is gprs after the gps gprs is launched h was launched and h is the enhancement of gpr service and uh, enhancement of h technology is um ts okay so they are just the enhanced version of gsm okay uh gsm the full form of gsm is global system for mobile communication okay it was launched in uh, early 90s and uh, gsm is the standard agent of 2g technology okay 2g technology and uh, gsm uh, provides so many features and the one of the most popular feature that was provided by gsm is sms or you can say text messages okay and uh, it provides the capability to download any content from the service provider and the contents like uh, you know uh, ringtones logos or pictures so all these contents we can able to download from our mobile phones and uh, but the rate of uh, data communications is is slow and just because of this drawback we came up with the enhanced version of gsm okay and uh, gs uh, gprs full form is general packet radio service and uh, it is a uh, it is a wi wireless service gprs is a wireless service that that offers mobile data in a faster speed okay and uh, it also provides so many features and the most popular features provided by gprs is m m s okay as we already discussed that gprs is the enhanced version or we can say upgrade over the basic features of gsm so uh, the uh, features provided uh, by gsm is sms and mms is the enhanced version of mms in sms we can only text message but in mms we can add uh, we can uh, text message but plus we uh, can send or we can attach with the message uh, any uh, picture video uh, sound clip and all okay after the completion of gprs edge technology was launched and edge 
technology is the enhanced version of GPRS. Okay, and the full form of edge technology is enhanced data rate, enhanced data rate. for gsm evolution for gsm evolution it is a enhanced version of gprs and uh, it uses 3g radio technology okay in gsm we use 2g technology but in edge technology we use 3d radio technology okay and uh, edge gives the users the unique chance to increase the throughput capacity and data speeds at least three or four higher to gprs okay so gprs provide higher speed than gsm and uh, edge provides higher speed or increase the throughput of uh, you know the uh, uh, mobile communications higher than uh, three or four times more than to gprs okay edge will increase increase data rate uh, three or four times higher higher than gprs with the help of with the help of new modulation and coding scheme and coding scheme different different coding scheme is used and uh, different error correction method also used in this technology uh, then umts technology was launched and uh, the full form of this uh, technology is universal mobile telecommunication system mobile telecommunication system UMTS is the enhanced version of edge technology and uh, UMTS is the latest com commercial available technique technology that mobile phones using today okay so it is the latest commercial technology that are used by mobile phones nowadays that are used by mobile phones nowadays with this development of internet access video calling or messages are now uh, possible with tra traditional phone phone calls okay and uh, that av availability is provided by umts okay so the new technologies we can able to use with the old or traditional phone calls also it, it is now possible okay so now we will come back to our question gprs gprs is a emerging wireless service that offers a mobile data in a very fast speed as compared to gsm so we match gprs with this gsm gsm is just an integrated digital radio standard okay uses 2g technology umts is a 3g wireless mobile telecom technology as we already discussed edge uh, is uh, increased data rate of gprs and with the help of uh, 
different different modulations ten different schemes of modulations and use it coding schemes and uh, error corrections also there in uh, edge technology so we we'll match with this okay so the correct answer of this question is question option b okay so the question number 27 is object request broker orb is first is a software program that runs on uh, the client as well as on the application server second is a software program that runs on the client side only okay and the option third is a software programs that runs on the application server where most of the components reside okay so the orb basically the orb is middleware it works like a middleware in distributed computing uses corba okay so it just a orb is a orb works like a middleware okay like a agent you can say okay like it's a middleware in distributed computing in distributed computing and the orbit and the sorry and orb take care of take care of all the details all the details involved in involved in routing a request from client to object from client to object and routing the and routing the response to its destination and routing the response to its destination okay so orb works like a middleware in between the client or even server and uh, whenever client request for any object okay it's it involves all the details in uh, use in routing and uh, whenever we get the response from the server side it also routes route all the information all the response information or all, all all the details stored in it and uh, orb orb runs on client side as well as server side okay the usage of orb is on both sides okay on client side orb offers number of services like it provides client with interface to the orb and object implementation one of the one of the interface that was provided by orb is dynamic invocations and uh, this uh, interface allow any request at run time so we can request for any object at run time also and uh, orb is also useful uh, at server side and uh, at server side uh, it also offers number of services orb deactivates uh, inactive objects and reactivates them whenever a request come in so i'm starting it it provides or b provide provides number of services on the both side 
on the both sides at client side it provides it provides interface interface like um, example dynamic this is one of the interface dynamic invocation this interface is allow request at any runtime okay allow request at runtime okay and uh, at server side ORB deactivates any um, inactive object object and reactivates them whenever a request come in okay whenever a request comes in from the client side okay so orb a software program that runs on the client as well as on the application server this option is absolutely true a software program that runs on the client side only no it also use or run on the client on the server side also a software program that runs on the application server where the most of the uh, components reside this option is also uh, wrong because it also run on uh, client side okay so the option one is uh, is the only option which is correct so the correct answer is d okay move to the next question okay question number 28 question number 28 is a software agent is defined as a software developed for accomplishing a given task options two is a computer program which is capable of acting on behalf of the user in order to accomplish a given computational task okay and the option third is an open source software for accomplishing a given task okay so basically a software agent in uh, artificial intelligence is defined as a computer program um, which is capable of acting on behalf of users in order to accomplish a given task okay so computer agent in artificial intelligence defined as a computer program which is capable of acting on behalf of the user in order to accomplish a given computation task that was given okay so the option number b is the only option which is correct according to the definition of software agent okay now then uh, question number 29 match the following list to list one is the classification clustering feature extraction feature selection and in the list two there are some algorithms are given okay so one by one we discussed about that so first is classification first one is classification um in machine learning classification is the problem of identifying which set of uh, category a new observation belongs to okay and uh, so in uh, pattern recognition the k nearest neighbor algo this is algorithm a k nearest neighbor algorithm which is used in uh, pattern recognition pattern recognition 
so in pattern recognition we use the k nearest uh, neighbor algorithms we also uh, known as knn okay k uh, k nearest neighbor algorithm and uh, it is a non parametric method which is used for the classification and regression regression means uh, estimating the relationship between the where uh, different different variables okay so uh, with the help of uh, this algorithm we can classify or uh, uh, and find out the estimate relationship between the different uh, variables so for that we use this uh, algorithm in uh, pattern recognition okay the, so the next one is clustering clustering uh, Clustering is the popular method and uh, it is also known as the cluster analysis in data mining. In data mining, we use this uh, method and uh, and the algorithm which is used is uh, k-means. Okay. And the aim of this uh, algorithm is to partition and observations into and observations they was there and we cluster them into uh, k uh, time different different uh, k clusters okay and in each observations belong to the cluster with the nearest mean so we uh, apply nearest mean algorithm on this different different clusters so the clustering is uh, used in uh, this k means algorithm the next is feature extra extraction feature extraction uses a uh, principal component analysis so what is that principal component analysis is used for face recognition technique for uh, feature identification in large sets and to highlight uh, their similarities and difference is is more essential step in face recognition so uh, feature extraction uh, is used in uh, face recognition and for for that we use uh, pca this is a pca and uh, this one is used for the face recognition technique okay the next one is feature selection feature select for feature selection we use branch and bound algorithms that is used to find uh, optimal features subset without uh, dealing with all possible sets okay so the correct answer of this question is uh, i think uh, one clustering is uh, fourth so this is a c so, so the correct answer of this uh, question is c okay so the next question is set set an open encryption and security specification model that is designed for protecting credit cards transactions on internet stand for okay so, so the full form of set is secure electronic transaction secure electronic transaction and it is a security protocol set is a security protocol that enabled users that enabled users to use their to use their credit cards credit cards on an open network on an open network like internet okay so the set is secure electronic transaction Question number 26 is match the following with respect to the mobile computer.
क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी वन इज इन अ पेज मेमोरी मैनेजमेंट एल्गोरिथम द हिट रेशो इज सेवेंटी परसेंट एंड इफ इट टेक्स थर्टी नाइनो सेकेंड टू रीच टी एल बी ट्रांसलेशन लुक असाइड बर्फर एंड हंड्रेड नाइनो सेकेंड टू एक्सेस मेमरी द इफेक्टिव मेमरी एक्सेस टाइम इज वॉट ओके सो वी कैन एक्सेस द पेज फ्रॉम द मेमरी थ्रू टू मैथड्स विदाउट टी एल बी एंड विथ टी एल बी बेसिकली वी यूज टी एल बी मैथड बिकॉज इट टेक्स लेस टाइम टू एक्सेस एनी पेज फ्रॉम द मेमरी एंड टी एल बी वर्क लाइक अ कैशे मेमरी कैशे मेमरी बिकॉज फ्रॉम द प्रीवियस एक्सेस इज दे फिल देअर टेबल एंड एंड द नेक्स्ट टाइम वेन वी वॉन्ट टू एक्सेस दैट पर्टिकुलर पेज दैट पेज विल डायरेक्टली वी कैन एबल टू एक्सेस फ्रॉम द टी एल बी ओके सो टू मेक आवर फ्यूचर बेटर वी यूज टी एल बी टू एक्सेस एनी पेज इन अ फास्टर वे वी यूज टी एल बी सो वी विदाउट टी एल बी uh when cpu generates a one uh, logical address generates one request to access any particular page so it generate generates one logical address and that logical address contains two parts first part is uh, page number and the second part is instruction offset okay and uh, when we uh, uh give this page number to this page table actually this page table it it's also works like a data structure in which many frames are stored and that uh, page table is also stored in uh, somewhere in the main memory okay so whenever we access any page table we access the whole page table from the main memory so when we get this uh, particular frame we uh, give this frame number to this physical address and physical address combined with this uh, offset and makes a physical address and then this physical address from with the help of this physical address we can able to access that page which request is generated by cpu okay so in this whole process we access the main memory we access main memory two times okay why two times first time when we access the page table okay so page table is also present in the memory so to access uh, page table from uh, main memory one memory access and uh, second memory access uh, is when when we want uh, when we go through the page table and then page table uh, gives the frame number and then frame number gives uh, uh, all of physical address and through with the help of a physical address we access the page so second time when we uh, access page which is available in memory uh, that time secondary second memory access so in total memory access in this process is two two memory access are there okay so, so what about uh, in tlb in tlb if that particular uh, page which request is generated by cpu is already present in tlb then we directly go to the tlb and if it is hit we directly go to main memory okay so the formula of uh, emt is okay em e m a t is effective memory access time is hit ratio the hit ratio uh, is 70% So seventy percent is zero point seven into time taken uh, in TLB is uh, is thirty nanosecond. Okay, and if it is hit, uh, we access the frame 
uh, which is present in TLB and uh, one memory access is used because if a uh, frame uh, we fetched the particular frame number we uh, go to the main memory and uh, at that frame number like uh, example if uh, frame number at frame number 32 page number 1 is present then uh, we access this page number 1 so one memory access is there and so plus one memory access and the uh, memory access time is 100 nanosecond so it is 100 plus the miss ratio is 0 0.3 multiply okay uh, if we if cpu generates some request first we go to tlb okay so tlb time is 30 and if it is miss we go to page table so first we access the page table from the main memory so it takes one memory access and the memory access time is 100 nanosecond and uh, if we get a particular frame number okay so f uh, f with the help of this frame number we can able to access any page which is present in memory so one memory x uh, memory access is also there and the memory access time is 100 so we put 100 okay and when we solve all this uh, equation we get the answer is 160 nanosecond so the answer of this question is d next question is question number 32 match the following okay so in list one uh, list one uh, some uh, scheduling algorithms are there okay so first we discussed about this scheduling algorithm one by one and then we will come back to our question okay so first algorithm is first come first serve first come first serve is fcfs the short name and the mode of this uh, algorithm is non primitive meaning of non primitive means uh, first come first serve is uh, works like a batch processing okay what is batch processing batch processing means those processes who have less arrival time okay come first and after the completion of one process only then another another job will be scheduled okay it means like we have a process p1 p2 p3 and they have arrival time like uh, the arrival time of uh, p1 is one arrival time of p2 is 3 arrival time of p3 is 2 and uh, so the arrival time uh, the criteria of the first come first serve is less arrival time okay so first we scheduled process 1 okay because it has less arrival time okay and after the completion of p1 only then uh, p2 or p3 will able to come in this uh, Q. so then uh, arrival time of p3 is less than p2 then p3 come and then p2 so this kind of processing is a batch processing okay so when now uh, when a uh, completion of one process another job will be scheduled that kind of uh, processing is batch processing okay so the next algorithm is SJF. SJF is shortest job first, or we uh, we also known as shortest job next. And uh, this algorithm is a is give optimal scheduling algorithm. Uh, and the reason is it gives maximum throughput, okay, maximum CPU utilization, minimum waiting time, and minimum turnaround time. And the criteria of this uh, algorithm is uh, uh, like uh, for in first come first serve we schedule the uh, all the processes according to according to their less arrival time but uh, this algorithm use the criteria which process has less burst time less burst time means time required for it execution to complete their execution okay but practically uh, this algorithm is not possible because 
we have to predict uh, the bus time in advance and that is not possible we cannot predict uh, the complete execution of any process in advance so practically it is not implemented but uh, uh, in theoretical way it is a optimal scheduling algorithm and uh, there is one exponential average formula. This is Tn plus 1 alpha Tn plus 1 minus alpha Tn. This is Tn is a actual uh, bus time. And this Tn and this Tn is predict bus time. And alpha is smoothening factor okay so with the help of this fact uh, uh, this uh, exponential average formula we can predict the bus time in advance but this is not a practical in use so sh shortest possible next use exponential smoothening to predict any bus time okay in advance next is round robin round robin uh, use primitive method in primitive method uh, one process can print another process if it has a high priority or less burst time okay so it can print the running process okay and the criteria is time quantum we have given some uh, time quantum like two so for two time the process will uh, execute then process p2 will print this process okay and so on and it is more suitable for time sharing operating system okay so round robin scheduling is time slicing use time slicing the next uh, scheduling algorithm is multi-level feedback queue and this uh, scheduling algorithm is basically used to avoid starvation problem because in some cases if uh, process p1 p2 p3 is there and p1 has their uh, you know less uh, uh, high priority but uh, has a uh, you know large burst time in that case starvation problem may exist so to avoid this kind of problem uh, multi-level feedback give preference to high priority jobs which has less burst time okay so depending on the priority of uh, processes uh, processes are placed in ready queue and in that way the scheduling algorithm will work and it will avoid the starvation problem so uh, multi-level feedback queue criteria to move processes between queues okay so the um, correct answer is a is second first come first serve is uh, uh, is third now sj shortest process next is uh, is fourth and day. so the answer is d okay next question is next question is match the following okay so allocation continuous allocation or uh, linked allocation indexed allocation multi-level indexed allocation these are the some disk space allocation methods okay so continuous uh, continuous allocation in the continuous allocation like we have one uh, okay and uh, disk and different different files are placed so how we placed these files so that we can easily access all these files okay so for this we use disk space allocation method so first is uh, con continuous allocation uh, continuous allocation each file occupies a continuous set of blocks on the disk okay so all the files in the disk in the continuous memory okay it's so like number one number two file number three is placed here number four after four number four five six and so on okay it support both sequential or random access we can we can randomly access any uh, file or we can um, sequentially we go from one to four and then we access file number four internal fragmentations present okay internal fragmentation present in the 
in the last block if we placed all the files according to according to their sequential order so it may happens like in the last block internal fragmentations may exist okay and external fragmentation is there in continuous allocation increase of file size is not possible because all the files are placed in a continuous manner and we are not able to disturb any of these sequences okay so in that case increase of file size is not possible next allocation method is disk allocation uh, sorry linked allocation method each file is linked list which is need not to be continuous okay like file number 1 linked with file number 5 file number 5 is linked with file number 4 so it is not to compulsory that each file is, is uh, must be linked with the in a sequence order okay and internal fragmentation is also exist in the last block in this allocation method also no fragment in the external fragmentation is there and we can increase the size of the files whenever we want because it is a linked list and uh, in linked list uh, we can delete we can insert any file and it at any time okay so we can increase next method is index allocation method index allocation method each file is associated with its own index like num file number 4 and with file number 4 it has its, its own index okay index and index uh, blocks contain the pointer to all the blocks occupied by file like um file number 4 occupied 5 uh, or 2 okay file number 2 or 5 so it points it gives the pointer to the blocks occupied by the file number 4 no external fragmentation is there in this allocation method and uh, in multi level uh, indexing this type of uh, allocation method is used when uh, one indexed table is very large so in that case we break it into different different levels so first level index block used to point second level index blocks and last block points to the blocks occupied by the file okay so continuous allocation match with the number of this required to access file is minimum because they are in a uh, uh, placed in a continuous manner and we so the number of this required to access file is should be minimal okay in li linked allocation this allocation technique supports only sequential files and the reason is because all the files are in a linked together and if we want to access any file we have to go in a sequence manner index allocation in the index allocation this technique suffers from the maximum weightage of space storing in pointers okay so every file contains uh, its own index and in index it contains the pointers to those blocks occupied that file so it's just a maximum wastage of storing pointers and the multi level index this scheme supports very large files because we have already discussed that when one index file is already you know very large and it contains a lot of uh, blocks occupied by a diff uh, particular file we have to break into different different levels so in that case we use multi level indexing so the correct answer of this question is a third b second c fourth and b so answer is correct answer is b next question next question question number 36 is merge sort makes two recursive calls okay which statement is true after these two recursive calls finish but before the merge step okay the first option is the array elements forms a heap option b elements in each half of the array are sorted amongst themselves option c is elements in the first half of the array are less than or equal to elements in the second half of the array or option number d is all the above okay so merge sort is a divide and conquer algorithm we first divide it and then we combine it okay so what is the procedure we use in this algorithm is 
if we have a one array and this array is sorted but uh, uh, in first half it is sorted and second half is sorted okay so we divide into two list list number one and list number two list number one is one sorted sub array and list number two is second sub uh, sorted sub array okay and then uh, with the help of merge step we merge it we merge these two sub arrays uh, like uh, we use uh, if uh, uh, let's say this is the list number this is list l and this is list r if l i is less than or equal to r j okay then uh, a k let's suppose it is a a then a k is equal to l i and we increment the i plus plus i okay else else a k is equal to r j and we increment j okay so uh, number one uh, uh, pointer i point one and uh, pointer j point two point of one is less than point is two so we placed so we uh, yeah, so this one is satisfied this condition so uh, we put one in our our original array one okay and we increment i now i now i compare with this j j pointer now two is less than five so this condition it follows so we put two in this array and we increment j so, so before the merge step we have to uh, you know uh, sort on uh, these two uh, sub arrays so elements in each half of the array are sorted amongst themselves then we merged then we use this merge step to make it one particular array so the correct answer of this question is b now the question number 37 a text is made up of the characters alpha beta gamma delta sigma okay and with the probabilities is 0 0.212 0 0.40 0 0.15 0. 08 0.25 and uh, they asked the optimal coding technique will have the average length of okay so we to use optimal coding technique so in uh, first you make one table in this table text is written probability is written and number of recurrence is not given they given in uh, probability so first we have to come uh, convert this probability into number and if we want to convert this probability into number we have to divide divide it uh, with a number with a particular number which is divisible by all so uh, I have divided uh, 100 because 100 is uh, divisible by all so the uh, so uh, we get 12 40 15 8 and 25 so in the question uh, it is given that use optimal coding technique to use this kind of question so i'm using the shortest method and it save lot of time in exams okay so um, i'm here the first we have to find the minimum number of occurrences alpha and delta are the two text which has minimum number of occurrences delta has eight and uh, alpha number of occurrences 12 and when we add these two we get 20 and the next minimum number of occurrences is uh, gamma so gamma has uh, gamma uh, why gamma occurrences 15 and when we merge this we get 35 
okay so uh, next minimum occurrence is for text sigma sigma 25 sigma 25 okay and when we merge this we get 60 okay and uh, next minimum occurrence is for uh, beta beta number of occurrences is 40 then we merge we get 100 okay and now the notation 0 for the left side people and 1 for the right side people and I got 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 okay so in this way the Hoffman chord for alpha is 1 1 1 and the number of bits used is 4 and the Hoffman chord for beta is 0 and the number of number of bits used for the representation of this kind of text is 1 3 4 and 2 so you notice one thing those text who are given high priority has less number of bits okay so beta has high priority and it has less number of bits so just write down one uh, important point that those text are high priority high priority they have less number of bits okay and those texts who has uh, low priority low priority um, like uh, Delta they have large number of number of bits okay so when we want to calculate the average length use the probability probability so the probability in the questions are given so um, the probability of alpha is 12 by 100 into 100 into 4 40 by 100 15 by 100 into 3 okay 8 by 100 into number of occurrence of delta is 4 plus 25 by 100 into 2 because the number of occurrence of sigma is 2 okay and we get finally 2.15 the average length of the required given question the answer is b next question is next question is question number 38 searching for an element in the hash table requires big o one time for the which case and whereas for direct addressing it holds for the which case okay so basically hashing is a data structure and the main purpose of this data structure is to store the data and to search any element in a faster way so to search an element we have different different uh, data structures are there and uh, like uh, you know, if we use unsorted uh, data structure we it takes order of n time in a sorted data structure it takes order of log n time in a linked list data structure it takes order of n time and in these data structure list best search is order of long n but we want to uh, minimize this time also and for this uh, uh, to overcome this kind of problem we use hashing and to minimize uh, the minimum search time we use hashing and the average time the hashing will take is order of order of one 